that hasn't been an update on my seven and a quarter inch gauge project. Um, mostly because it's been summer, so either the, the weather was too warm or <clears throat> I've been on holiday. But as you can see, and I'm going to show some footage, the um, oh, I think almost all of the parts have been painted now. So this is the um, the the main chassis. So it's painted black, and these pieces are just the side decoration pieces, like you know um, steps and. Um, I don't know, the battery boxes, and I think this is uh, um, uh, like the filler cap for the fuel. So this has been added, <clears throat> but probably the, uh, the biggest change is, um, is around here. Uh, namely, we had to modify how the, uh, the motor is mounted to the chassis in order to, uh, to adjust the uh, the position of the motor relative to the uh, uh, to the axle, so we can get the um, the chain drive just tight enough, and also these brackets have been added um, just to guide uh, the bearings so it can move freely up and down. Uh, maybe this wasn't necessary, but um, uh, again, because this is the first one, we thought that that might just help. So we'll see how it turns out. The front of it got some nice chevron patterns. Um, I must have made um, a mistake on paint, uh, selecting the paint because uh, uh, in between the yellow and the black that was more than a week so the, I'm pretty sure that the black was, uh, was dry enough but I think um, the yellow paint was a different solder, uh, solvent type so it started bubbling up the paint so it doesn't really look nice but it um, um, I left it as it is because now it looks like an old, you know, narrow gauge engine which, you know, the paint is crooked and some of the edges are wrong because I think I waited too long removing the masking tape and it start, the whole paint started to peel off. So again, as I said, this is a big learning curve for me. And talking about the paint, um, the, the, the body also received the final coat of blue because that was my original color. So the, the green was more like an undercoat and you can see some of the, the yellow decoration. Um, I think this, is, this yellow is probably just a little bit too much. I should have gone with an orange or something. Um, it, it, you know, it just shows too much. But maybe I just need to get used to it. Um, so three headlights and I also have red lights and a big star, which I guess is more like a European thing. The grill also got painted. Um, the, the handlebars so far are the same colors as the, as the body. Maybe I should repaint them. I'm going to think about it. And I have a small like, engine plate on the side. I have the window frames fitted as well. Um, only the outside one, so the glass is missing. And the, and the roof has been painted. Great. So just to show you the mechanism, so this is the plate, um, so it's a new part which has been fabricated. It has some countersunk holes, so the, the, all the motors mount to this plate, like this, and then it goes into these guides from the front, and um, it's a little bit tight at the moment with the paint and everything. And basically it's going to sit like this and a piece of, um, I think it's an M6 or, or an M8, is going to hold it like this. And then with the two screws I read around here, um, or sorry, the nuts, um, you can adjust the position and then move it back and forth. And this plate is going to slide in these guides. So obviously the, the axle is going to come here and uh, the engine would be something like here. Um, you know, sort of towards the uh, the middle of the axle, and so you can um, uh, adjust the position of this, and then adjust the tightness of the uh, um, chain drive. Also, I'm not sure if this was available or this was ready last time. Um, so this is the sprocket I got um, from uh, oops <coughs> from a local company who sells all sort of uh, all this stuff. And it came 
exactly the same as here. I think these got, uh, the scored the the central hook needed to be reborn uh, or drilled um, up to 20 mil, and then uh, another hole here for the set screw. So that okay. So that is going to keep it in position on the wheel. Uh, actually, sorry, on the axle. And that's the wheel. You've always seen that. And that received this, hmm, again, I don't really know the English name of it. So it's basically welded on with two, three spot welds. And again, this gets a set, set screw. And hopefully this is going to be strong enough to keep it on the, uh, um, on the axle and stop it from spinning. And I cleaned all the wheels up. There is a little bit of uh, rust and um, painted it with lacquer. So that should keep it shiny, which is not really prototypical, but I think there is, oh sorry, there is enough black here just to give it a little bit of a contrast. And I like it this way. And one more last minute change is about the drawbars. Um, so you probably remember it was, um, hmm, I don't think you have, I, I have it anymore. Well, maybe somewhere. So this used to be um, a, like a rod which mm, I wasn't sure if that would not start spinning um, on its axis. So we thought that uh, let's keep it more prototypical and then um, use a piece of uh, square stock and, and the bracket which goes on the front has been also um, changed. So it like, you know, it's like a, a square tubing uh, with two screws and it's going to hold it lay, uh, like this. And of course the, um, the spring will come here um, inside the chassis uh, to keep it springy. So that's the new drawbar. I had to learn quite a lot to get the painting done. Um, mostly because it was either too hot uh, to use a spray paint or it was too windy. But eventually I got some really nice days actually. It was still quite hot. So I timed the painting in the afternoon when the whole driveway is in the shade. I have some big pieces of... Um, OSB and, and, uh, and cardboard to put it down, but I still managed to uh, just a little bit over spray on the, on the pavement. Hey ho. Um, so um, the chassis comes um, to, two to two separate uh, pieces. Um, it got painted in two different uh, days one day on one side and the second day on the other side, and uh, of course the chassis got also uh, painted green, sorry, um, blue over the green and of course some of the other parts. The, the top of the uh, driver cab uh, was painted um, grey. I didn't bother to uh, put the grey into the spray paint so that was actually painted by hand by brush. And um, um, the chevrons are done, you know, uh, how would you imagine. I managed to get this um, Masking tape, which was just about the right uh, width. I think it's um, 24 mil uh, tape. So I taped it up. I sprayed it with this um, uh, yellow spray paint, which was acrylic. And I think the base coat was a different kind of solvent. So that caused the whole thing to bubble up. And you can see that on the video. It wasn't really nice. So um, after a couple of hours, I went over it again. Um, which sort of coated the, the entire thing a little bit more even, uh, but it didn't cause any more bubble up. So um, that's how it's going to stay. So what I'm planning on doing now is put the whole thing to, back together. So the axles, the, uh, the, the, the motors and everything, and then turn the whole thing over and start fitting the batteries and and some of the internal details try to work out how I'm going to uh, lay them out and uh, more importantly how I'm going to secure them. And some sneak preview for the, uh, for the next step of the project. These are the new bearing houses that I got from the, for my first uh, uh, coach. So before I start uh, doing the assembly, I just want to show you um, a little bit of footage on how the engine looked like before or how the, the local looked like before I stripped it off to pieces again to paint them because it was all assembled and it was working and um, uh, I also got a welder and I started learning welding and 
in the learning process I created two lengths of um, one and a half meter straight, straight track and actually I placed the, um, the engine on this tech track just outside the, the garage uh, because I wanted to see how the, the suspension works. So I have a bit of footage which you can see now where I'm jumping on the train trying to test the, uh, the suspension and I have to say it's working like a charm. It feels like, um, like I don't know, like a hoverboard because it rocks um, back to front from side to side and um, it just works like as it's supposed to. Putting the engine back together is relatively straightforward. Um, you take the axle, you put the two wheels on with the uh, with the sprocket um, wheel in the mid, uh, in between. Also, don't put, uh, don't forget to put the chains on, and then the the axle bearings go on either side, and then the whole thing just goes into the holes uh, which mount the the axle bearings uh, to the to the chassis, and <clears throat> once it is in place. Um, Sometimes I had to use some force to get it in uh, because I'm guessing it was quite tight and with the paint on probably it just uh, the clearance is just not enough so I might need to well the, the some of the paint will eventually chip away and then it will be free again just uh, like it was before. So once um, it's all on uh, then I check the gauge so according to the seven and a quarter in society the flange to flange distance is 173 mils so I was checking it with a, a, with a ruler and then um, aligning the set screws with the notches that I made into the, into the axles so the set screw can bite into those um, notches just to make sure that it's going to stay, stay that it's not going to spin around uh, so there are one set screws for each wheel and then one for a sprocket wheel and then two at the end of the axles uh, so it's not really complicated, it just takes a little bit of time. So when I was done with one on the axle, uh, I wanted to put the, the motor on, but I realized that I should have done it that one first because the, the wheels was in the way. So um, I had to undo the set screws, move the wheels to the side, obviously mount the, the motor to the, to the plate, slide it in from the, si slide, uh, from the side, and uh, you know, regauge the wheels, um, fasten the set screws again, and um, uh, put the sprocket onto the uh, to the motor, and then just pull the whole plate back so it's um, it's you know sufficiently tight, and um, that was pretty much it. And of course, then I had to do the whole thing for the other side as well. What I forgot to add yesterday, <coughs> and I don't have the footage of doing that, is this piece of rod which connects the these two upright pieces again I'm not really sure if it's really necessary but whoever did this uh, for me said that um, it's just better to keep the whole thing in you know it just keeps the whole thing more rigid so it's um, it's a tube and there is a threaded rod going through and two nuts on either side and most importantly she runs again One thing I noticed is the um, uh, the spring mechanism is not so free as it was before, and I'm guessing it's just down to the fact that um, it was quite tight, and with the paint now it just uh, probably rub rubbing, rubbing against the paint, so that needs to wear off, and uh, it's going to be uh, just like it was before. And this is how the whole engine looks like with the lower side panels test fitted yeah engine number one